here, get ready to square off and do battle. Their final match of the day. Winner comes back tomorrow to play. Loser goes home. So we will be underway here in just a moment. Do want to thank you for joining us all day long. We brought as much magic as we could across as many formats as we play here on the SAD Tour. So we hope you're able to join us for some, if not all, of the day. Tomorrow we got another long one in front of us as well. But these players are enjoying themselves. We've been on the floor. They've been loving the tournament, which makes us very happy. They've been having a really good time, and we're, you know, and the stress is starting to ratchet up here. These players are getting eliminated, and uh, that's really when you see some of the camaraderie kick in. Yeah. With the opportunity to win that first place prize, $20,000, and of course that SCG Tour Players Championship title belt is what these players are here for. They worked very, very hard and long all year to get to this point. Now you see Harvey with a witch's oven. And the follow-up is probably going to be a cauldron familiar. And this is the exact kind of start that you have to have in this matchup. Get to the battlefield early. Now, if he is able to find a copy of Trail of Crumbs or Mayhem Devil, things get even easier here for Dom Harvey. And even still, the, this uh, combination of cards puts a burden on Corrigan to get to the battlefield maybe before he would like to. Maybe start tapping out some on his own turn. And that will give Harvey an opportunity to resolve even more powerful spells. Culture Familiar is going to come in and out of the battlefield very, very quickly there as Harvey will gain a little bit of life. And the Ting Abe Corrigan for Corrigan. No Growth Spiral, no Paradise Druid just yet. So not able to take an advantage as far as mana is concerned. Playing a very reactive game thus far. Yet floor mana, 4 mana, pardon me, is the flashpoint for Simic Flash as it would like to be able to keep up Night Pack, Ambusher, and Frilled Mystic. Neither card available just yet here for Corrigan. That is another copy of Gilded Goose. That's going to slide onto the battlefield as well. Another food will be made. Again, the big question right now, if you're Harvey, is do you have one of your payoffs? He's playing a lot of copies of Corvold. He has, of course, many copies of Mayhem Devil. As there's an op for Corrigan, so he'll take a look at the top card. And that will go to the bottom. That's a new addition to the deck. Dominguez, Manfield, Nelson elected not to play that card last weekend in Long Beach. There is an island past the turn back, so double blue, double green available here for Corrigan for Frilled Mystic and Night Pack Ambusher as Cauldron Familiar again will come in and out of the battlefield. And Harvey with presence on the battlefield that's hard to interact with and a lot of mana. Uh, if Corrigan starts trying to respond with flash creatures in the middle of combat, that's going to give Harvey an opportunity to leverage removal spells or resolve something powerful post-combat. Well, step one's going to be an attack there with the Cauldron Familiar, and that's going to work just fine. So another point of damage will come across. Corrigan's down to 15. But for as much as Harvey has done, he has not put a big payoff onto the battlefield yet. So we haven't seen a Mayhem Devil or anything like that just yet, which will be making this game very easy for Dom. That is another Gilded Goose, another food on the way. A Stomping Ground is the battlefield tab. We might see Knack Pike Ambusher, and we certainly do. So, now it's up to Harvey to respond in kind here with a swift end, which fortunately for him, he does have. So, Murderous Rider is on an adventure, thanks to the swift end. The follow-up here is just going to be a force and a passing of the turn as Harvey will quickly activate a Witch's Oven on the Cauldron Familiar once again. And that really uh, informs the way the game is going there with Corrigan trying to... Uh, play something and leaving the shields down there, forced to try to do that uh, because Harvey's putting him under some pressure. That's a slow bit of pressure, but it is pressure nonetheless. The Gilded Geese, plural, along with the Foo Tokens and Cauldron Familiar plus Witch's Oven. Again, if you're Dob, you're looking to get yourself into two spell per turn territory to overload these counter spells. So Mayhem Devil plus Trail of Crumbs is a nice little turn. Mayhem Devil plus something in addition, maybe even just casting Murderous Rider and getting on the battlefield. But for, for, for now, Cauldron Familiar will come across and deal one. There's a swamp, and here is a murderous rider. That's going to resolve. All right, Abe. He's going to try it again with an eye pack ambusher. This time it's going to work, and now, Patrick, the dynamic of this game is certainly going to change. Yep. Uh, although, you know, Corrigan is still, even at 13, at risk of getting burned out outside of combat. Familiar plus all this food plus the witch's oven is, you know, that is a, a, a faster clock than it would appear, especially mm -hmm. with Gilded Goose to generate more food. Here comes the ambusher. We're going to see a food token made here. And now the familiar will do its thing in combination with the witch's oven. 
But Corrigan is going to make a wolf token, not going to play a spell. That wolf is going to be a 3-3, of course, giving the ambusher static text. So we're going to go back over to Harvey, and now attacking is starting to become really difficult, and now you have to play through this wall of counter magic, because you may have noticed that Abe Corrigan didn't play a land, so you have to imagine that he's got all reactor spells in hand. But Harvey is very good at chump blocking from this position, and even if he can't get through on the ground anymore, still has some pressure. Life total is now 17 to 12 in favor of Dom, but this game is starting to get away from him a little bit. It does not take long for Nightpack Ambusher to force the issue and forcing you to play into Simic Flash's counter spells. Dom needs a real card here, and ideally two to cast in the same turn, as there's a stomping ground that's going to enter the battlefield untapped. This will be a Corval that Harvey immediately puts into the graveyard, and he's right about that. Field Mystic's going to take care of the big dragon, and we're going to head back Corgan's way. And now this game is really starting to be taken over by our Simic Flash player. Yeah, that's a big shift right there. And you can see Corrigan's still got a lot left over in hand, another copy of Field Mystic. The question is just, can you get the game over within time? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is going to be yes. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Called and Familiar is... Great at being a resilient threat, but doesn't deal damage in a ton of chunks, unfortunately. So, I'd be a little bit surprised if Dom is able to steal this one, unless he's able to... And he needs to draw a couple of good spells in a row right now. I think that's the biggest miss here for him. And Corrigan, well, he'd like to get this game over with as quickly as he can, and he's starting to take a stranglehold on it. There's your wolf. No attack this time. Called it familiar. Will do its thing. So 16 to 11. We head back over to Harvey. This is a trail of crumbs, perhaps. No, it's just a paradise druid. Not exactly what the doctor ordered, and I don't think Corrin's going to care about that one. We'll see. It still might not be a bad spot to cast a frilled mystic just to get a 3 3 on the battlefield and start attacking. Sure, sure. Yeah. Frilled Mystic going to come down, so a 3-2 is ready to join the fray. Two of them now, along with two 3-3 Wolves and a Nightpack Ambusher. Now it makes you wonder, when is Corrigan going to actually attack with all these creatures? As he's got another counter spell in his hand and Sinister Sabotage. So life is pretty darn good for our Simic Flash player right now. Yeah, I mean, the game plan is being executed right now. Good presence on the battlefield. Plenty of good reaction in hand to handle the top of Harvey's deck. Now it's just an issue of getting the game over with as soon as possible. Well, I like this attack. Let's get this game over with. And that's exactly what he's going to try to do. So Frilled Mystics, plural, are going to attack. You see Cauldron Familiar jumping in front of the Nightpack Ambusher. And it looks like nine points of damage are going to come through. Witch's Oven will be activated, sacrificing the Cauldron Familiar. Murderous Rider will trade with the Frilled Mystic. And of course, Murderous Rider will go to the bottom of the deck and give it its text when it dies from the battlefield. And now another wolf will be made. We're going to head back over to Dom. He is in some serious trouble now, folks, as Nightpack Ambusher has certainly taken over this game. He'll untap. He needs to try to resolve something, but of course, Abe Corrigan has a Sinister Sabotage in hand. So Harvey will draw a card. And he's already reaching for a lot of mana. This is one of those games where if a Corvold would have resolved, probably would have Lights won out. the game by itself. <laughs> Crystal Brand? Yeah, as <laughs> Matthew Dilks has so eloquently called it here this weekend. It certainly feels that way sometimes. And now there is Corval that Harvey's immediately putting into the graveyard. The Surveil will put Paradise Road into the graveyard. And I think we may see another attack all here in just a moment. So we head back Corrigan's way, picked up a copy of Breeding Pool. Again, don't forget, winner of this match, they're going on a day number two of competition. Loser goes home. And it'd be tough for either one of these players to head home, but it's been a tough tournament for both of them. They are in our play to stay portion of the tournament, as here come the attackers. Easy block there for the Cauldron Familiar. Looks like Gilded Goose has found a block as well. And now, the Witch's Oven will be activated again. Dom will sacrifice a food. He'll gain a little bit of life. 
And that Goose will die, so 9 points of damage is going to come through. Breeding Pool is going to enter the battlefield, tap there for Abe. See, Light Soul is 9 to 5. Harvey reaching for mana again. Not sure what he drew, but it looks like he's reaching for five mana, so it might be another copy of Corvold. Actually, looks like it might be a copy. It's actually God Eternal Bantu. Got a reader. Yeah, I mean, worth reading. It does have a lot of text. We can take a look at it just like Abe is. This card doesn't see a ton of play. I think it might pick up at some point, but it's certainly not going to resolve now. Sinister Sabotage is going to take care of it, and away we go. Abe Corgan, a win game number one here over Dom Harvey. Simic Flash up a game here over Jun Sacrifice. And I saw a little pump of the fist over there, bud. Trying you're, to catch up in I this know. commentator pick him. Yeah, your pick. You I got a well. dub here and a bunch of L's for the rest of y'all, and I'm just right back in it. Right back in it. Take a look at the sideboards here very quickly for Dominic Harvey. He's got four drill bits, four Noxious Grasp, three Epic Downfall, two Casualties of War, and two Return to Nature. What do we like here and why? Ah. Uh, I'm down with Drill Bit in this matchup. I think information about Corrigan's hand is worth quite a bit, uh, and it's not the hardest thing to turn on early in the game. Um, the rest of it, I, I mean, I, I don't, I actively don't like Casualties of War in this matchup. I don't think Return too slow. To, yeah, I don't think Return to Nature is appropriate either. Um, but I, I'm in, I'm interested in Drill Bit. That's the big one. Okay, other side of things here for Abe Corrigan. A uh, much different sideboard. Two Sorcerer Spyglass, two Frogify, two Ether Gust, two Love Shark Beast, two Mystical Dispute, five one ups here in Brazen Borrower, Chemistry's Insight, Negate, Crushing Canopy, and Hydroid Crisis. Uh, I like some of the cards for a more attrition-y game. Um, uh, you know, something like Chemistry's Insight, additional copy of Hydro Crisis I could be talked into. I really like Sorcerer's Spyglass here a lot. I think shutting down uh, uh, the oven or some of the other activated cards here is really valuable. Well, those are the options there for both players in game number two. We'll be underway here in just a moment. Again, winner moves on, loser goes home. Advantage currently for Abe Corrigan as we take a look at the Season 2 schedule of the SCG Tour. We'll be kicking things off in Columbus where these two players, Abe Corrigan and Dominic Harvey, actually squared up against each other to kick off the season in the same format, Team Modern Open. Corgan's team won. Harvey's team got second place. That's what got their year started. This SCG PC will be finishing it up. But one place they didn't go that we haven't been in a while is Knoxville. The return to Knoxville has been a long time since we had a mo an open there, and we have a modern one January 11th and 12th. In February, we have opens in Richmond, Philadelphia, and Indianapolis. Uh, March starts off with the regional championships. That'll be modern. You can head over to starcitygamescom slash regionals for more information. So we get a little bit closer to that one. Uh, the following weekend, we'll have a Pioneer open in Baltimore. And then for the rest of Season 1, we don't have formats announced yet, but we do have dates and venues with Syracuse in March 21st to 22nd. April, we'll have Atlanta and Worcester. May, three opens, Cincinnati, Louisville, and Philadelphia. And then SCG Con Summer featuring the... SCG Invitational. That will be June 11th through the 14th. Well, we prepare to watch these two players continue on. Abe Corrigan currently up a game. Our Season 1 point champion 20 years old from Brooklyn. A member of Team Lotus Box. Many of his teammates to qualify for this tournament and they are mostly into day number 2 of competition. They'd love for Abe to join them. And for him in 2019, he played in 18 opens, top eight at four, and won one of them. That team opened to kick off the year. All time, four open top eights, one open win. It's that one in Columbus that we talked about. And the fact about him is fairly straightforward that I didn't know. He loves cucumbers. Good fact. How do you feel about cucumbers? Extremely positive. Yeah? Yeah. Just as a general, or do, do, do you prefer them as pickles, or just you'll be slicing like cucumbers both. and eating them? Okay. Like them both. All right. Both ways. So, it, 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 so for pickles. Do you like like a sweet pickle or like a dill pickle or just are you fine with like all types? All whole range. Okay, so all a lot of people hate the sweet pickle. It's my least favorite of the, but I, I take them all, all types. Okay. I'm pro. I'm very pro pickle. Yeah. Yeah. Very very good food. Just eat them by themselves. Don't. I don't. It's fine to put them on things, but no, it's good solo. I'm just good solo. What's the brand name? Kosher. K o s h e r. Is that it? No, I think that's a a style of preparation i don't think that's a brand mm, i thought it was okay you could be right i can't i don't know I don't, i'm not i'm not I could well be wrong i'm not well versed in the pickle game all i know is that they are delicious that's all i know these players take a look at their opening hands here see if they're able to find something they like as game number two is about to be underway here in just a moment it'll be an overgrown tomb to start there for dom harvey temple of mystery here for abe corrigan He'll do a little bit of scrying here. 
That top card's going to stay on top there for Corrigan, it appears. If you're Harvey, you need to get a threat that sticks that really does matter. As good as Witch's Oven and Cauldron Familiar are, something like a Trail of Crumbs is a lot more dynamic. So there's a Paradise Druid. This is a Paradise Druid as well. It's a big addition to this Simic Flash deck that Seth Manfield made, helping to convince Brad Nelson and Javier Dominguez to play the strategy as well. It's not Paradise Druid's going to be on the attack here for Dom Harvey. Playing those four mana spells, a turn ahead of schedule is a world of difference. Yeah, it is uh, the inflection point for a lot of the best cards. Here is a drill bit with Spectacle. Not a card we see a ton of, but we're going to see it right now. And we'll see the options there of a Forest. Looks like a Chemist's Insight, a Frilled Mystic among the options. Nissa 2. So Ape really relying on this Paradise Druid to give him an advantage in this game. Harvey's going to consult his hand. You see he does have a copy of Trail of Crumbs there, but he really wanted to get the drill bit online, so he decided to go with Paradise Druid to kick things off. And uh, you saw uh, some of the strength of the flash deck there in game number one, where it was not enough for Harvey just to get underneath the game and get a presence onto the battlefield, uh, because once Corrigan re starts resolving some of his key cards, he can pivot and become very aggressive very quickly. So it's not enough for Harvey just to have a good initial turn, getting a little bit of setup here. He does need to try to either resolve something significant or prevent Corrigan from ever untapping with a threat card. There's a goose. Harvey going to sacrifice the Fabled Passage now. He'll get himself a basic forest. We head back over to Dom now. Access to four mana this turn. Actually, five, technically, with the goose and the food that's on the battlefield. So, which is up in the draw, it appears. You see among the lands, Castle Lochvain. But now you're playing as a deck that does have four mana that is available. That's the flashpoint, of course, for the Simic Flash deck to be able to do multiple different things in a turn. So we'll see where Harvey does want to start. Sequencing is so important here. Gilded Goose... Corgan didn't even bat an eye. He said, that's totally fine. Paradise Druid, sure, you can hit me for two. I don't care. Down at 16. And just going to pass the turn back. Okay. Corgan will play a Chemist's Insight. So he'll draw two. And he gets to untap, and maybe most importantly is that Paradise Druid is back to having Hexproof. As much as possible, Corrigan keeping the shields up on the key turn on the key points. You can keep accumulating extra cards, find a way to react to the battlefield, and and honestly, Harvey's not really putting on any sort of noteworthy pressure right now. Mm -hmm. There's another copy of Paradise Druid, and I think that Corrigan has access to a Sinister Sabotage. So if you're Dom Harvey, you got to get to the point where you play multiple spells in a turn, and Corrigan can only counter one. I mean, uh, Harvey's already at at, at a a crisis moment here mm -hmm. if Corrigan has uh, Sinister Sabotage. It's going to be really hard for him to get anything meaningful to resolve, and what he has on the battlefield right now is not valuable. Nope, it's not substantial at all. This reminds me a lot of game number one, where there just wasn't a ton going on in that game. And as good, again, as Witch's Oven can be, and it can be pretty darn good in some spots, it's not doing enough right now. So, for Corrigan, he's going to play an opt. He's happy with that card, so he will be untapping. And he will be drawing. Access to six mana right now. He hasn't played a land just yet. He will play a Sorcerer Spyglass, and this card's great right now for a couple different reasons. But first, we're going to see a Gilded Goose activation, perhaps. Now, it's worth noting, as you see God Eternal, Bantu, and Murderous Rider in hand, Sorcerer Spyglass is so great because it gives you the information of seeing your opponent's hand, in addition to naming a card, Pithing Needle style. So, in most instances, you're going to see players name Witch's Oven, and that's what you're going to see Abe do here as well. Well, Witch's Oven makes it so that the cheap cards don't matter, and then your counter spells handle the expensive cards. There you go. Pretty simple stuff. Temple of Mystery comes down. A little scry action. We head back over to Dominic Harvey, who's having a difficult time resolving anything relevant here in game number two. That is a swamp. And remember, Abe knows Dom's hand from the Sorcerer's Spyglass, so he knew 
He just drew that swamp. And the chances of him being able to resi resolve God Eternal Bantu are unlikely to say the least. So now we wonder where Corrigan goes next. One thing that Corrigan could use here is something like a Night Pack Ambusher to make this game very, very easy. That's about the only piece of the puzzle that he's missing right now. Yeah, if Harvey doesn't think that he can resolve a spell in this moment, what he can do instead is uh, turn over to Castle Lochlane and try to accumulate enough cards to try to do two things in one turn. But there's no point in running a five-minute spell face first into a counter spell. That doesn't get you anywhere. It's not going to get you anywhere at all. That's exactly the kind of game that Abe wants to play. So here is Gilded Goose again, a card that Abe is never going to counter. As many food tokens that are on the battlefield right now, they just don't matter. Neither does that Blood Crypt. So we're going to head back over to Corrigan. The Grand Prix Richmond champion at Magic Fest Richmond is getting really close to making day number two of competition here. He beat Reed Duke in the finals there, which is a very impressive addition to his resume. And he's thinking day two of the Players' Championship. After what was a really rough day one, as here's Chemister's Insight, going to discard Ethergust to jumpstart this. Hydroid, Crasis, and Forest, the cards that were drawn. Let's see if there's anything else in the end step. It looks like no, so Corrigan will untap those lands and draw a card. We know he's got a land to play. is being done here by Corian. Unsure of how exactly he wants to move forward. But I don't think he needs to be in a rush. No. And for someone who has back against the wall against Dominic Harvey multiple times facing elimination mm -hmm. might come all the way back to advance the second day at Dom Harvey's expense. His position right now seems very strong. Yeah, I'd be happy if I was a Harvey going to draw a couple of cards here. One for Castle Lockvane, one for the turn. Fable Passage is the land for the turn. Now, the nice thing about uh, Harvey having all this food is that it allows him to keep activating Castle Lockvane even if he's not playing cards out of his hand. Normally, there's an expiration date on being able to activate that card if you're not playing anything, and Harvey's not going to be playing anything for a while because he wants to set up being able to play multiple spells in a turn. But with the food, he has the cushion to do this for a long time, even if he's not playing anything. That he does. He can continue to just kind of do this thing. And it looks like we're going to see a Castle Vantress activation. Scry 2. These castles, kind of free rolls in these decks, don't really affect the mana negatively in any meaningful way. It can happen, I suppose, but it's pretty rare. More importantly, the addition that they have with their text, like Scry 2, is invaluable. It's, there's a draw. Able to play a land very quickly and just pass the turn back. So perhaps he found what he was looking for. And there's another Castle Lockvane activation. More food. Mm-hmm. Big dog's got to eat. <laughs> And there's a forest. And we'll pass it over. There's a night pack ambusher. Took him long enough, but he finally found it. And now the goal, I imagine, is to defend it. Might be time for a swift end. Tough spot here for Harvey because he cannot let Abe just have this night pack ambusher. We saw what happened the last game, and it looks like he's going to have it. And he's clear for takeoff with an attack, too. Nothing stopping him sending in with the 4-4. Four -four. So 
So it looks like it may be time for an attempt at swift end. Yeah, this is the reason that Harvey's doing this now as opposed to on his own end step is that if Corrigan responds with some sort of counterspell, at least you keep the wolf off a trigger. Mm-hmm. Which is important. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. You know, because uh, normally the, the uh, in that spot it's, well, I need to cut him off a draw step. He's used up some of his mana. I got to try to pick this fight now. Harvey knows he's extremely likely to lose it no matter what. So at least keep Corrigan off of a trigger. Well, there's Frilled Mystic to take care of the swift end. And that means Murderous Rider heads to the graveyard as opposed to being on an adventure, so won't be able to play Murderous Rider because it's not exile. We're going to attempt to swift end again. Well, this is, you know, Harvey has done a nice job. But unclear, you know, if he's ultimately going to win the game from this spot, but he's doing all this on Corrigan's turn. So either he's going to get a good exchange, killing something, or he's going to force Corrigan to commit a lot of mana and maybe get Harvey can resolve something on his own turn. Mm-hmm. This is why Harvey was in the holding pattern for so long and why he decided to activate Castle Locklane. Your big stuff isn't going to resolve for a long time. you got to get it out of your head that that's the way this game's going to play. What you can do instead, draw some cards, set up shop, and hope to be able to respond to any of Corrigan's proactive cards and uh, at least pick some fights, if not on your terms, at something resembling a neutral position. Committing a bunch of mana on your main phase, getting a counter, and then saying go, you just can't do it. That's a, that's a that's a line that loses 100% of the time. The way that he's playing this here, he's at least got a shot of navigating through Corrigan's reaction. We're going to head back over to Harvey. Noxious Grasp with a draw. So Dom has clearly gotten a little bit more reactive after sideboard. And, you know, look, look at the spot we're in now. Corrigan's got four cards in his hand. Harvey's got about the same. And no one's overwhelming on the battlefield. Harvey has slowly navigated the game into something resembling a neutral spot. Now, Hydrocrasis, maybe even Nyssa can blow this wide open. So it's not like he's, you know, pulling ahead by any stretch. But he has chosen a line that's given him a shot. And those are cards that oftentimes do blow the doors off of a game. Chemist's Inside has already been cast and jump-started, so that's no longer in Abe Corgan's repertoire. He does have that Castle Vantress, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and he has activated that land once this game, but we might see it show up again here in a turn or two. Does that increase the quality of the draw step as you see Corgan start to separate the land some? And that's where Hydra Crisis starts to come in. It's not as good in the flash deck as in the ramp deck in abstract terms, but it's something that prevents uh, a deck like Judge Sacrifice from being able to pull ahead with just a draw a card every turn sort of effect and grinding ahead that way you can just blow the game wide open by you know drawing five if the game drags out like this Corgan might be thinking attack here at Field Mystic but he's had some difficulty closing the game he was ahead there for a little while but was having difficulty actually winning so Murderous Rider is going to block Field Mystic they'll trade Murderous Rider will go to the bottom of the deck of course Breeding Pool is going to enter the battlefield on tap there for Abe Looks like he's going to fall down to 14. And what's the big follow-up if there is one? He's counting. He has something in mind. You see the Hydroid. He also has a Nyssa in hand. We're happy to let you know that our last match for the Battle for Bias is completed, as this one will continue on to see who's going to stay in our tournament. For the Battle for Bias, Colin Roundtree, congratulations to you, our Season 1 Invitational Champion. You've got to buy in day number two of competition. Matthew Dilks was defeated, and so for Dilks, he'll have to start things off in the first round of day number two, while for Roundtree, day two just got that much easier. Nissa's in. And now there's a Noxious Grasp. Negate looks like it's going to take care of that. Okay. So. We are having some fun. 
in a battle over the Planeswalker. Harvey looks like he has another way to respond in another copy of Noxious Craspell, right? And at what point is Corrigan willing to use the last counterspell? Well, you know, if you think that you, if your position's okay, you'd like to hold it for as long as possible, and the Hydra Crisis in his hand gives him a pretty strong incentive to just keep it going like this. Even if you lose your Nissa here, it's not the end of the world. You're going to gas back up, hold up your counterspell, and, and be in a good spot. And it looks like Corrigan's still there. Well, no shot on making a move if I know my opponent's card is God Eternal Bantu. Right, yeah. which Which he knows. Yep. So I'm not making a move because I cannot let that card resolve. So we're going to head back over to Harvey. Now, Harvey would love to draw a copy of Drill Bit to clear the path for the God Eternal Bantu. And if God Eternal Bantu resolves, the game probably ends immediately. Yep, that's just too, too massive. Because this 5-6 Menace has some very relevant text, like sacrifice any number of other permanents and draw that many cards, and there are a lot of food tokens on the battlefield to sacrifice. Castle Lockfane activation. Looks like there's also a Mayhem Devil in hand now. Well, that, that's that's the one too you're that, looking for. That qualifies as a second meaningful card to try to resolve here. Mm hmm So much food um, that uh, either one of those cards resolving is going to be uh, potentially a major advantage for Harvey. Well, there's your castle activation. Scry two in the house. And you got to imagine if Corgan uh, eventually wants to play this Hydro Crisis, he's probably going to tap down to. One counter spell, but not two, because you just don't have enough mana to make the crisis big enough, and then leave up two pieces of reaction. And if Harvey has two meaningful cards, one of them resolves, and then you got a game. The reading pool is going to come in there. Oh wow, we're tapping a lot, aren't we? Wow, he's making his move. Hydroid crisis. Draw a couple of cards. Frilled Mystic among them. That is a Castle Vantress. And now we might be getting to the point here because that Hydro Crisis is so large. Might not have a meaningful way to actually kill the thing. It looks like Harvey's going to sacrifice a food to gain a little bit of life. He's up to 12. He'll actually sacrifice two food. So now, again, remember that Corrigan knows that Harvey has God Eternal Bond too. But the other card is the one that Harvey's going to lead out with, which is Mayhem Devil. And so if you're Abe, the question is, which one do you want to counter? But I actually don't think it was much of a question at all. I think you let that Mayhem Devil resolve very quickly. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's still... Uh, okay, if you think you can play through it, I guess. Um, I, I guess I guess Corrigan's still bottlenecked on mana uh, to be able to activate it enough... Uh, food to make the Mayhem Devil kill things that are meaningful. Yeah, and don't forget those witches oven. Those witches ovens are off. Right. Yeah. So in that respect, Mayhem Devil is finally a real card, but it's pretty darn late to the party. And that was a card that Corrigan let resolve very, very quickly. Again, saving a counter spell for God Eternal Bond too. So he didn't even bat an eye. This is another witch's oven, which of course Abe is not going to counter. And now will Abe add it to his battlefield? He will not. So he will just untap all those lands. And he's going to draw a card for the turn as we are deep into the late game here. And allow his Jellyfish Hydra Beast to start to end this thing. There's an attack for six. Looks like Breeding Pool is going to come in for three as well. And Harvey's going to have to consider blocking here. Now, remember that Mayhem Devil is symmetrical, but this Simic Flash deck doesn't really do much sacrificing of anything, so that doesn't really come up all that often. Oh, I found out about that the hard way. Oh, boy. <laughs> Can you guess the card? In a mono red deck? Mm-hmm. Did you sacrifice Experimental Frenzy? No. Okay. Then I can't think of it. Chandra 3. The old personal plague wind. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bud. It's 
tough way to go down. Yeah, I got my Weaselback Rider. No. My... <laughs> that card's horrible. It was looking that good. Card, that card's horrible. Well, you know, the the Weaselback just attacks right into the Mayhem Rider. You just pump it if they block, right? So that sure. was good. And I had the 1-1, uh, the, one -one, the Invitational card. A fervent champion. And you can't block the Mayhem Devil mm -hmm. with that because if I got the 3-1... Uh, the with adventure, yeah. then you're blown out again. Yeah. So position looks pretty good. You press it a little bit by making the two tokens. Oh no, I got Their it. blocks are bad for the same reason if you got plus two plus zero, mm -hmm. but then everything dies yeah. <laughs> at the end of my turn. I saw. They're at twelve, four food is in play, yeah. <laughs> and they still have the man up. Lesson learned. Yeah. Lesson Some learned. Some things you gotta see the first time, yeah. and then you just know. Well, Jones Sacrifice has taught many a player a lesson, that is for sure. And Harvey's trying to figure out a way to slide something through this wall of counter spells. You don't like the weasel? I'm not a big fan. Mayhem Devil is going to be frilled mystic. That's getting countered. Have you seen Weasel Steamkin? <laughs> it's th it's lethal. <laughs> Here's a cheers. <laughs> Let me tell you how that works. It's lethal. Here's Trail of Crumbs. <laughs> Harvey's last card continues to be God Eternal Bantu. Trail of Crumbs would have been such a nice card for Dom to find so much earlier in both of these games. It's really the engine card of the deck. This deck does so many different things, but it goes into complete overdrive once it has Trail of Crumbs. Yeah, that's the card that really puts pressure on Corrigan to do something ahead of schedule. And, there's and a copy. Ha Harvey has not had it early enough. There's a copy of Ether Gust with the Trail of Crumbs on the stack. So Harvey gets to decide where he wants to put that card. And you may not have caught the copy of Sinister Sabotage that is hiding out in Corrigan's hand, but he does have one right now. So away goes the Trail of Crumbs there for Dom. Does he dare try to cast this guy, Eternal Bantu? He will not. Again, remember Harvey does have food tokens to keep himself alive because he has the mana to activate them. Though Corrigan will start to be able to attack for it very close to lethal because he does have that 6-6 six, six flying hydroid crisis on the battlefield. It can't be chunked by the Gilded Goose. It sure cannot. Trample is uh, one heck of a keyword, that's for sure. Looks like Corrigan might be tuning up the band again. Another crisis incoming, potentially. I'm into it. Here comes Frilled Mystic. Here comes Hydroid Crisis. Alright, you sack of food, you get a trigger there from the uh, from the Mayhem Devil, so a minor positive there for Harvey. But Dom is in a rock and a hard place. Sorcerer's Spyglass has been beautiful here for Abe Korg in this game. Shutting down three copies of Witch's Oven, giving him some information, knowing to play around Guy Eternal Bantu basically the entire game. So, Frilled Mystic's going to bite the dust from the Mayhem Devil triggers. More importantly, if you're Harvey, can you actually finally draw a copy of Drillbit or Corvold? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. The, the ship might be sailing on a lot of the stuff here if Corrigan's got a follow-up threat. What is this? Looks like maybe another Hydroid Crisis? Don't have a great sense of it. That is another Hydro Graces. Just want to make sure it's for six again. Couple of cards on the way. Two and three. Paradise Root among those cards. Oddly, we're watching a game here in which Abe Corrigan has not cast a Growth Spiral in either game. No. But one of the namesake and most important cards in this deck. Now, didn't get a great look at that draw step, but I think it may have finally been a drill bit. Yeah, but Corrigan's now at a spot where 
Drill bit might not be good enough because if he has two counter spells, you're against it the same way. Yeah, if he does have two counter spells, you're uh, you're all done here, Dom. Unfortunately for him, twenty to one. Those are the life totals here. Advantage Abe Corrigan in a very meaningful way. And for Dom Harvey, he's got to be thinking to himself. I had that matchup against Abe earlier, where if I just would have beaten him, he'd be headed out. He would have been out of the tournament already. I was up a game, and the matchup I wanted to play, Titan Shift versus Bant Urza. I wasn't able to get it done then, and he's having some real difficulty getting it done now. Down a game is Harvey. Drill bit finally showed up, but it looks like it may be too little too late. Harvey's going to sacrifice a food token. Mayhem Devil Trigger is going to go upstairs, so there is a mana floating, and there is the drill bit for the spectacle cost. Combo. It is a combo. Look how free that was. Well, this is interesting because Corrigan has not made his move yet. And I think Corrigan may only have one hard counter in hand right now in Sinister Sabotage. I think he was hoping that Hydrocrasis would yield him something additional. Yeah, then you would be covered against Drillbit. Mm-hmm. So there's the hand. Sinister Sabotage, at least one copy of Grow Spiral. Yeah, I'm seeing a hand without a counterspell now. Yep. And so now we're going to cast Guy Eternal Bond, too. Let's see what this is. This is Grow Spiral Hope to hit, maybe? Though I don't know what we can hit. Because Quench won't do it. So here's the Spiral. There may be something to hit there. It's not Sorcerer's Spyglass. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Combo's incoming here. So this is a lot of damage. If he sacrifices everything, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's... That's that's lethal. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. That's actual lethal if this gets through? Oh, my goodness. Are we actually looking at lethal damage here? Yeah, I mean, we've got to be... I think they're confirming life totals now. The Guy Eternal Bantu plus Mayhem Devil Special? He's going to get it done? Yeah, and Abus... Oh, my gosh. We're going to play a count. third game? Are we actually going to play a third game? We are actually going to wow. play a third game. Wow. He finally drew the drill bit to get it through. It was not too little too late. Corgan only had one counter spell and Sinister Sabotage, and Dom Harvey is still alive. Game three coming. Yeah. Both of these players have been Jeez. on the on the brink of elimination several times. An extremely well-played game there from Harvey. And that was, uh, I think, a great class in how to try to play a game where you know your opponent has a wall of counter spells and you're trying to resolve something big. Unbelievable. And, you know, from Corrigan's side, you got to wonder. I mean, there was a turn where deep into the game, played a breeding pool untapped for, I think, really nebulous upside the way that it played out. Harvey's at one. Could you have found a point of damage somewhere mm -hmm. along the way? I mean, all of it. All of it. There's no way you will lose a game like that, and there's nothing you could have done differently about it. There are too many turns, too many decisions. Well, you're, you're always just kind of second-guessing yourself at that point, right? And that you see Corrigan's reaction here. It, frustration, thinking I was one game away from being in day number two of competition. And he's been on the other side of this, too. That's the other thing. Yeah. Is, er, just earlier, when these two played, it was Harvey that was up a game, and Corrigan and was mulliganing to four in game number two. And Corrigan was able to come back and win that game, win the match, keep his day two dreams alive. Now we have a rematch between these two players who know each other all too well. They ran into each other in the finals of our first Open of the year in Columbus. Corrigan was the victor there. He was the victor earlier today. And Dom Harvey's got to be thinking, hey, man, it's my time to get one of these. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm allowed to beat you when it <laughs> matters, okay? You don't get to win every time. He might have other ideas, though. And these two very competitive 
but good sportsmanship here. Again, winner goes on to day number two of competition. Loser goes home. Everybody else is at home who's made day number two of competition. Harlan Fear, Chris Barone, Joe Lissette have been eliminated from our tournament thus far. Congratulations to all three for qualifying for the Players' Championship. And one of these players is going to go home too, and one is going to come back tomorrow and battle to try to make the top four for day number three. Harvey will be on the draw. Corgan on the play. I will say this. Simic Flash, a deck that loves to be on the play. Yep. You want to get ahead on mana and then uh, lock out your opponent from playing anything big on their main phase. Get to two spell turn territory as fast as possible. We're underway. It'll be an island here for Abe Corgan. Dom Harvey, an overgrown tomb. Cauldron familiar. Harvey will go back up to 19. Corrigan will fall down to 19. And away we go. This is a forest. And that is a mana accelerant there in Paradise Druid. That's the big innovation to this deck. Didn't have before. Most players played Brianborn Cutthroat. Seth Manfield, the Hall of Fame. Genius level player that he is. Said, what if we cut this turdy creature and play this oh, busted that mana card, card Yeah, the Brianborn Cutthroat's not bad. Paradise Shred might be a little bit better, though. What if we cut this thing that is, like, weak and makes our bad draws even weaker and played something that's strong and made our bad draws better? Yeah, that. Seth Manfield, master. A genius. Well, a genius. Well, guess what? No one else did I know. I know. Yeah. No one else did. Yeah. So. so that does make him a genius. There's an island. Pass the turn back over to Harvey. Harvey's got a Paradise Druid, a Cauldron Familiar, a couple of lands. We head back Dom's way. I played against that 2-1 a little bit. On Paradise Druid? Or Brynborn? Oh, Brynborn? I've lost to it a lot. I have not. Well... I've not. I've lost to Paradise Druid a ton, though. That's fair. Brandborn ain't no joke. Sometimes my opponent plays a card against me on Magic Online, and I say out loud in an empty room, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, you cast but, that, I don't believe but, you. But I do believe that you do that. Yes. It's the thing. Take a take a sip from a glass and mm -hmm. say, I do not believe you. Chemistry's Insight, Growth Spiral, Sorcerer's Spyglass, couple of lands. There goes the Spyglass. That means the Witch's Ovens will be online, presumably. Harvey going to play Fabled Passage. The follow-up is a Trail of Crumbs. He's starting to build the engine now, folks. Here's a Chemist's Insight for Corrigan. He'll draw two new cards. A Forest and a Castle Vantress is not what he's looking for. Be a good time to draw on this and get that on the battlefield. But he drew a Breeding Pool instead, and he's starting to flood out. And with Harvey knowing the contents of Corrigan's hand, and with Chemist's Insight in the graveyard, something for Corrigan to do with his mana, I think Harvey's going to be very aggressive in the next turn or two, just trying to resolve something big. It's mm -hmm. a good spot to do it. And uh, if... Corrigan doesn't have a response. You know, this deck does not play from behind all that well. Now that's the big weakness of the strategy. Loves playing a parody or, or ahead. Nope. Behind, it does not really even have the tools to catch up in most matchups. Yeah, it can't. I mean, that's really the story of game two. It can't kill things. Mm -hmm. And so for all the advantages that Corrigan accrued, uh, that Mayhem Devil gave Harvey an out, who's able to, f to leverage it. There's another cauldron familiar. Another cauldron familiar. All right. Well, this kind of this kind of sucks. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, you you wish it was more if you're Harvey. Right. There's growth spiral. That's resolving. Land's coming. Sorcerer spyglass was drawn. Now Corgan's just trying to figure out exactly what land he wants to play off of the growth spiral. Those were not the payoffs that Dom Harvey was looking for. That's for sure. And now here comes Chemistry's Insight with the jump start. So discard a card. 
It'll be a basic island. Two cards coming here for Corrigan. Chemistry's Insight has been exiled. Nyssa and a forest were the draw, so Corrigan will untap all those lands in the Paradise Druid and will draw a card for the turn. Another copy of Growth Spiral. Corrigan's hand may be forced here to just go to Nyssa because he doesn't really have much else going on. Shields are down, and Harvey knows that the shields are down, so mm -hmm. you can't even really keep appearances. Grow Spiral. Draw a card. Looks like a copy of Ether Gust. If I'm Ape here, though, I think it might be worth it to put the shields down for a turn and play a Nyssa. Yeah, and you got to build an advantage. You got to do something. You got to play to the battlefield here a little bit. And if Harvey's hand's just a little bit soft, uh, Nyssa can be a game winner all on her own. Mm hmm. But you know that Harvey's not really going to be playing around your counter spells. He saw your hand a couple turns ago. And you don't even have counter any counter spells in your hand anyway that you've drawn the last couple turns. So I think Corrigan has a pretty powerful incentive here to just do something strong and proactive. And something strong and proactive is exactly what Nyssa is. So it's hard to say no to the powerful Planeswalker. It is one of the most proactive things you can do in this entire format. There's a land for the turn. Previous land was from Growth Spiral. Yeah, and that we're sure of. At least that, that I'm sure of. They'll double check, but... He just thought a minute before playing his land off the Growth Spiral, then played his land for the turn, so it looked a little bit wonky. Yeah, if he went Growth Spiral with Chemistry's last turn, that means he had five lands. Mm -hmm. And so going up to seven this turn squares with the Growth Spiral. Yep. Now he's just got to figure out how he wants to tap. See Dom confirming things there with him. And I suppose the question is, how do you move forward here? Because I will say, Nissa, as powerful as it is, and it is an incredibly powerful card, and everybody knows that now that's played standard, it's kind of a little bit of difficulty getting through Cauldron Familiars. That's kind of the annoying bugaboo right now. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, no oven, and you got to start somewhere. Mm hmm Now, there's no breeding pool to untap right now for Corrigan. And there's Noxious Grass that's going to take care of the Nyssa. Island looks like it's going to be untapped. And clear for an attack if you'd like to take it. I'm just going to pass the turn back. Corgan looks frustrated as we head back over to Harvey. Now, Corgan does have access to Ether Gust right now with the mana that is available. Here come the kitty cats. Meow. You're going to take the damage because you don't want to put a cat in the yard. Then Trail of Crumbs can start going bananas. Mm -hmm. So, Corgan's down to 11. Harvey will pass the turn back. No real payoff. Corgan is going to untap all those lands in the Paradise Druid. He'll draw a card here in just a moment, I believe. Yes. He does. Land for the turn, attack for three. And the no attack last turn actually ends up making a lot of sense. The reason for that is you don't want a cauldron familiar to go to the graveyard, so it looks like Abe is gonna go with Cauldron Familiar with the Sorcerer's Spyglass. I mean that a lot it puts you in a position to start blocking. There's a swift end on the basic island. So we're seeing some plays you don't see much of. Uh, you know, it's a little, it's a little mopey, but you gotta, just gotta keep trucking in. Gotta just keep trucking in with these cats, you know. Yeah, I mean, you got nothing else to do. Three three is so big. 
<laughs> Gotta do something. Yeah. Three three so big is so true. big. Harvey with a negate and a frilled mystic in hand. Well, it looks like Corrigan is uh, uh, looking at this uh, for uh, Castle of Antrus. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, he's behind on the battlefield. Those counter spells are really strong, but they're not what he's looking for right now. You want another Planeswalker, something like Hydroid Crisis would be good. Harvey has done a lot of work to try to win this match because his draws have not been great. Yeah, game two was, you know, up until this point, my opinion, game of the tournament. Yeah. There's your trades. Paradise Druids will trade. Paul Familiar is going to come on through. Yeah, Harvey had such a great idea of how to play that game as Paradise Druid with the draw here for Corrigan. And it looked bleak for numerous turns. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Corrigan's draw right now is unkind. Breeding Pool, Aether Gust, Paradise Druid. Castle Vantress among the lands, and it's got some real work to do. That Sorcerer's Spyglass on the battlefield is naming Cauldron Familiar. And it looks like, after playing a Paradise Druid, He'll pass the turn back over to Dom. 15-6 to six in favor of Dom. Dom's got the better battlefield right now, too. He's just got to close the game out. And there is a Castle Lock Vein. Big draw. Yeah, these castles are very, very good. There's an opportunity cost to play them, but oftentimes it's worth it as these creatures are going to start attacking. Paradise is going to trade with the Cauldron Familiar. Four damage is going to come through. Corrigan's down to two! It looks like maybe make that one. Pardon me. Gotta be crisis to keep playing. Yep. Corgan will draw. And he will extend the hand. Dominic Harvey wins this game and matcher over Abe Corrigan two games.